Hello everyone and welcome into this week's uh, Accenture Cafe. I um, hope you're kind of sitting comfortably and you've got a, a cup of coffee or a cup of tea maybe, a cup of Accenture tea or something, um, ready to join in for today. Um, we've got quite an interesting session um, planned for you today. Um, Stuart has been um, working through uh, a sample um, that can show a number of different um, elements within Censure all kind of working together. Uh, everything from the kind of the UI to the backend data models and uh, and some of the bits that are kind of uh, quite key to getting uh, applications built and up and running. So um, this is going to be um, a, a really, really interesting session, bringing lots of different um, bits together into a, a, a kind of a real kind of uh, project that you can pick up and uh, and start using uh, and there's lots of real world kind of examples of things that you might be doing uh, in terms of aggregating different data together that you want to show to your customers in a unified dashboard or you know, for communication or, or whatever it is um, so hopefully this is a, a nice simple sample but um, uh, that still kind of gets into the the details of all the different bits um, which is pretty cool so um Stuart I'm gonna hand over to you um, and um, yeah, so as always, please, you know, we've got the chat panel open, uh, we are live, um, so you know, please throw your messages through and we'll kind of get those related to Stuart as we're going through if there's specific things or bits you want to kind of uh, ask as we're going through. Um, so yeah, Stuart, over to you. Thanks very much, Stephen. So um, welcome everyone. Um, as Stephen said, we're hoping to, um, all being well, to demonstrate building a um, small demo application over the next um, three weeks, I think we're going to try and spread it over as um, we dive into each of the aspects of the application. So um, today, so first of all, I want to demo what we're going to try and get to at the end. Um, we're doing a mad uh, rush to fix a small bug that Stephen just found just as we were talking before went online. So I think that's working. So what we're, um, so hopefully everyone can see my screen. Um, I'm just going to close this. If you want to go to that URL at the bottom of this uh, page, you can um, have a look yourself about uh, the full application that we're going to aim to build. And then at the lower URL, you can see um, what we end, hopefully end up with to, at the end of the day. Um, let's close this. Um, so on the screen, we've got basically what we're going to try and build is a, as a Gmail clone um, or a, an email client clone. Um, called Xmail is uh, what we've what we've called it, and um, so it's basically we've got a grid, um, a data grid with um, listing our messages. Um, the we've got unread ones marked with bold, um, and we've got a couple of different columns: the the um, sender's name, the subject title, and, and the um, and the date, and then. On the left, we've got some some uh, folders, labels that you might uh, be familiar with in Gmail, inbox, start, send, drafts, all that sort of thing. And then we can uh, click on the compose and we can write a, write an email. We can filter in some some emails, type the subject, <coughs> excuse me, and, and hit send. So that's what we're going to aim to get to, and then also we can cut through to individual emails and view the details. Apologies, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat this morning. And we can um, mark them as read, and, uh, archive them out of the inbox, or um, delete them uh, from here. So that's what we're going to try to get to over the course of the sessions in the next uh, two or three weeks. Um, and today we're going to try to get to this point here on this tab where um, we've got the grid of messages um, showing all the details. We've, um, we're able to refresh the data from the, from the back end. We're able to click through to view the details of the messages and return back to the, to the list and also do um, the star and unstar uh, functionality here. So that's what we're going to aim to get to. Um, all being well, we've done some praying to the demo gods this morning. So hopefully that uh, is, um, uh, is sufficient to get us going. So uh, hopefully you can all see my code editor here. If you can't, maybe give a shout in the chat. 
just to let us yeah, know if it's too small. <laughs> or if um, you know it was off screen or anything, just give me a shout. So this is a um, a basic universal app framework. We've got our app. This is a stop basically from a Essentia app generate command uh, with Essentia command. So we've got bare bones application here that we're going to fill in. And I've set up as a universal app because um, maybe in the future we will we'll add the modern um, toolkits UI for the for the app as well. But today we're going to focus on classic. Um, but we're going to uh, try and write it in a way where we're um, you know where we can expand and um, introduce the modern toolkit later on. So we have um, so if I go to this so, <coughs> excuse me so we've got um, an Essential app watch running in the background. Um, so at the moment if we refresh this page, we've got an empty um, an empty app and we'll open Dev Tools just so we have that there, um, so we can see anything that goes on. So the bare bones is we've got a, a main uh, view class, which is a viewport. And that's what's being shown uh, in the in the browser just now. So we can see that here um, somewhere else in the X viewport uh, down here. And we've got a main controller uh, in the app folder and a main model in the app folder as well. So the way the structure of, of a universal app works is that each pro each application has an app folder which is used to house common code that can be shared between a uh, modern toolkit app application and the classic toolkit. So anything that, that's sort of shared between those um, belongs in that folder. And it has the same sort of folder structure as the classic and modern equivalents. So it has um, view, you know, we generally have a view folder or a controllers folder or a model or a stores folder, that sort of thing. But um, when we do, when we use classes in the in the classic folder, we can then reference those um, common um, classes as well. So in this case, we've got a main controller and a main model, which are common between the modern and the classic, and we've got a main um, a main view, which is classic specific, and it references the main controller and the main model, and it requires them in, and we uh, attach them to the class here using the controller and view model properties and the two um, aliases that we've given them. So that's uh, our starting point. So that's dead, dead easy. Um, so to start with, we're going to just set up the data that we're going to use in the, in the application. So I've got a bunch of, um, so we're just set up with static data at the moment. So there's not really a back end as such. We're just going to load in messages and contacts and labels from uh, static JSON files. Which I've generated using an online tool to um, to uh, generate some sort of pseudo real data. Um, so I'll just stretch this out so you can see. So the first column is a labels um, property which has an array of IDs which will link to the labels that we've got defined in here. So they're basically inbox drafts, um, you know, newsletters or you know, bills that sort of thing. So they are the array of IDs that, that the messages fall into. And we've got an ID for each of them. And we've got first name, last name, email, which is the sender's email, um, the date it was sent, subject, and a message. And that's all we have. In the, and there's an unread flag at the, at the end on some of them uh, to give it to mark it as unread. So that's the messages uh, back in data. Um, and simple structure for contacts that's just to give us the, the the list of recipients that we can send emails to so we've just got first name last name and an email address and an id nothing too uh, crazy and then this is the labels that um will give us that structure on the left hand side we're not going to use that today um because we're not going to get to the to the labels uh, tree on the side but that's essentially a, a tree structure of um, of the labels you can see the Top level here, inbox start, sent drafts, and then the sort of sub uh, user labels uh, down the bottom here. So 
so that's our back our back end as, as such so now we're going to hook that up to um to the to the front end and set it up uh, to consume it so first of all we're going to create some models to to represent that data so in the app uh, folder because this is going to be shared um, you know, shared code between the modern and the classic because the data structures are going to change um, depending on the, the toolkit. So we create a model folder and we'll create a new file for um, a, for message, which is called message.js. Um, and we're just going to create a simple um, simple class, x-define, oh, x-define. That's a nice autocomplete here. And we're going to call it, so our namespace for our application is xmail. So that's the root namespace. And we use um, dot model and we just call it message. And then we open our configuration and we want to extend the base x dot model class. Um, so, and we're going to give it some fields. So, rather than um, type all these out, I'm just going to copy these in from the from the other project, and we can talk about them. Save my fingers typing. So, as we said before, we've got first name and last name, and we've used the um, object notation here. But equally, we could just uh, use um, a simple array of strings if we're not telling it exactly what type we're using. So. We're going to leave this as auto, so we've got first name, last name. And we've also included a full name field um, using a calculate option. Which, um, so we can combine the first name and last name together. So we're just going to extract the first name and last name and then um, join them together. And the reason we, we use the or of feature here is to stop undefines being combined together in this in this operation so that should give us so these will have stuart and this will have ashworth and then the full name will be stuart ashworth so we can display that in the grid and we've got an email and we've got the date and we the sample data has the date formatted in um, iso um, format so we use the the um, c key keyword there so so that will be parsed as a proper javascript date using that format and we have a field for the subject message and and also for the labels and um, which will default just an empty array if they don't exist then um then we'll uh, just get an empty array and it won't have a, a label assigned <laughs> and we'll talk about this enums uh, later on when we come to it um, so we'll just ignore that for now. And at the bottom, we have a few booleans that will be used internally just to track the state of the, the message. So unread this is obviously whether it's an unread message. Draft is it's an outgoing draft. Outgoing if it's been if it's an outgoing message, not an incoming message. And sent um, shows if we've, we've hit the send button. So that's um, our fields all set up. We also want to um, to make sure that we get unique, good, unique IDs for these messages when we um, when we create new ones. So we're going to use the um, UUID schema um, for creating identifiers. That'll give it a, a good when we um, create a new model, uh, a new message model, and we'll just require that um, that extra class in there so we have that available for us. Um, and lastly, we're going to add a few uh, helper uh, methods um, to the message model, mainly around the labels. So we want to be able to check whether a message has a label, and we also want to be able to add um, a label and remove labels from, from the messages as you, for example, if you archive a message, you want to remove the inbox label um, ID. Um, and if you are creating, um, if you're changing it to be a sent item, you want to uh, remove the draft and add the sent. So we're going to add a few helper methods here. So this is um, uh, not, you know, X specific, but it's all part of the application. So we're going to make a has label uh, function, and we're going to pass in a label ID, and then we're going to check. Um, 
we're going to first, I'm just going to paste a few of these things in, we're going to first get the labels um, array, and just to be safe, we're going to default it to an empty array, just in case it's blank or null, and then we're going to um, check for index of the past and label ID is greater than zero, and that will return a boolean to give us a has label um, indicator. And similarly, we're going to create an add label uh, function. I'll just paste this in. So the add label takes a label ID we want to add to the message to, to add a, a new uh, label to it. So once again, we get the labels array. We push the new one on the end, and then we set it back to the labels property. And in this instance, we use the clone uh, function to wrap around the, the array. And that's because when you just push a label, um, push an item onto a, the labels array, it doesn't actually modify the original array. And so that doesn't trigger uh, um, you know, an update event on the, me on the message model. So nothing will, no events will be propagated through the, through the application. But if we use the clone, then, then it creates a new array, and that will, the framework will detect that as a new, uh, completely new update, and you know, filter that through the application um, and used elsewhere. So, so that's why we do that. And then similarly, we're going to um, add a remove, which basically does the opposite of the add in the same pattern. Get labels array, and we use the next arrays remove helper function, um, and that removes the that particular item from the array, and then we set it back using the clone. So that's us got our message model in place. So that'll be ready to be used when we load in all the messages from our back end. So we're going to do the same um, for our uh, labels. Uh, no, we'll leave the labels just now because we're not really going to touch them just now. So now we're going to do the stores for the messages. So again, that's a common um, piece of code for um, both toolkit applications. So we'll put it in the app folder. So we'll create a stores, a store uh, folder, and we will make a new file, call it messages. So general practice is that you, the model is the singular, the store is the plural, and that sort of generally holds holds true across um, the sort of data modeling um, structure that I tend to use anyway. So we will, so we'll create an x.define, we're going to create an xmail.store.messages and then we're going to extend the x.data.store class. We'll give it an alias of store.messages and this, that alias, um, the store is a sort of namespace for, um, for all the store aliases and that means we can refer to it um, using, using that alias instead of the full class name when we come to, to instantiate it, so that's quite useful. We want to tell it to use our new messages model, so we do xmail.model.messages, and we want to uh, autoload it when the application kicks off, so we set autoload to true. We also want to make sure the message is in the correct order, so um, the backend data probably isn't in date order, so what we're going to do is we're going to set a sorters uh, array and define um, one to pick the date field and sort it uh, descending by date. So that'll make sure everything's in the right order. And finally, we just tell the store where to get its data from. So to that, we for that we need to define a proxy. And the proxy, um, we use the proxy to define where the data is coming from and how to process it. So in our case, we want to do an AJAX call, so we use the type AJAX, and we set the URL um, to be to point to our data uh, file down here. So we just simply do data slash messages dot JSON. And um, finally, we need to tell it how to process that data that's come back, so we need to define a reader, and in our case it's a JSON um, data file, so we use the type JSON, and we tell it um, where to find the the, the row, the property which has the array of uh, message items in it, so we tell it to set the root property, 
to rows and in our case down here uh, oh we don't actually need um, in fact we've just got a raw array there so we don't actually need that so let's do that out so that tells the proxy to load in from this url and we process the data that comes in as json and then um, use each of the items in that array uh, to create a new um, singular message uh, model and that will create a store full of message models and then we can use that in our application so that's um, us got our our data structure um, our source data we've got a model that will um, house each of those records and we've got a store to load them and, and manage them within our application so that's a, a good a good start so next we're going to um, set up our, our uh, view controller so we're going to use the mvvm pattern here um, so that we can manage interaction and manage the data um, the data that's uh, bound to each of the, the views so um, by default we have a main controller which extends the x.app.view controller class so we're going to um, because we're this view controller uh, is in the app um, folder that means it's common to, to both toolkits so we're going to change this to be a base um, controller uh, call it a base uh, main controller base because we we want to add toolkit specific logic to our view controller for, further down the line so we need to make this so the common code uh, the common uh, functions that are going to be a part of this main controller we are going to um, use that as a base class for our uh, more specific toolkit classes so we're going to change this to base and we're going to take out the alias because we're going to put that in our, in our um, our subclass so now in our classic folder in the view main we're going to create a new file called main controller let me spell it right .js and that's going to uh, be called xmail.view.main.main uh, controller that's sort of replacing the one that we had before which is now the base and we're going to use this to extend it Oh, so we're going to do xmail.view.main.main controller base. So when the, the loader um, loads the application, it will look, because it knows it's the classic application it's dealing with, it will look in the classic folder for files. So it'll look for main controller base in the classic folder and it won't find it. So it'll then uh, fall back to looking in the app folder um, and where it will find it and then it'll bring that class in and use that as the base so that's how the sort of um, fallback structure works and how we can share the code um, between the toolkits and the common code so now that we've got um, that extended we'll add the alias back in and that's the main um, alias that we use in our view mod in our view here so that's that reference that's that main uh, string there so so that's that set up now we're not really going to use that at the moment but later on that will be um, we'll use that later on uh, when it comes to adding the you know the interactions and things so with the view uh, controller ready we're going to now move on to the view model and the view model sort of holds the the data that each um, view is interacting with and holds a state for that view so um, so this is generally a lot of this will be common to the classic and modern toolkit so that's why we keep it in the in the app root so we've got a bare bone structure here we've got um, the data property which will hold all the little small data items sort of state um, properties for the application or this set of views we've got formulas where we can do sort of calculated fields based on other things and these will be automatically updated if there are dependencies update and we've got stores where we can um, you know create instances of stores that's going to back our our views so in this case we're going to have a messages store in there and an empty constructor where we can add any bindings um, that we need or any other sort of setup code so we'll come to that in a minute 
So first of all, we need to make the store for the messages. So in our stores array, we create um, a property uh, key called messages. And that's how we'll, we'll use that string to, to reference our store in any views that we want to. And now we can use we can use the alias that we created. So we use, so we use the type property and we um, use a string messages. And that will uh, reference the alias that we created here. So the we omit the store dot part and we just use the messages. Uh, and that will automatically create a store instance, uh, a messages store instance. Um, so that's all we need uh, there. So now we will have a, when this main class gets created, we will get a store instance, a messages store instance created for us. Um, so, so, that's, uh, so that's good. So now we've got a message store that will load data from the back end. It will create models for each of the records and we can use that in our application. So now we're going to start to build the view that will show the messages um, on screen. So we're going to create a new view in the classic toolkit. So this is going to be classic specific now because we're using uh, the classics grid. So we'll create a new folder called messages and we'll make a new file called message grid .js. And um, I have a shortcut, I think, that will get us a wee bit quicker. So let's mail dot view. So we're just, the namespaces follow the folder structure here. So we've got view under the source. So xmail dot view dot messages dot message grid. That's how we name any of the things. And we want to extend the grid dot panel. And we're going to create our alias. I'm, I like to use the pattern of uh, underneath the view and we'll change the dots to hyphens because dots don't almost always play nicely um, with this. So first things first, we need to create, we're going to take that next point out. We're going to create the columns array. So the grids, um, as you know, have columns and a data and a data source. That's generally the only thing they really need. So we're going to create an array of columns and these will um, define what data gets shown in the column. So I'm just going to paste over from our um, from our other side and we're going to, uh, I'll, I'll talk through everything here. So first of all, we want to show the full name. So the data index property tells us which property of the model we want to show in this column. So that's pretty straightforward. We choose the full name and that'll pick the full name property out of the model and um, display it on the screen. We give it a min width of 250 just so it doesn't get truncated. We're going to take the header out in this case just so it looks a bit um, more like Gmail, but nine times out of ten you'll want the header there. We're going to give um, we're going to use the TD class property to give it a, um, a CSS class of full name. That's so we can just give it some styles um, when uh, later on, and we're going to. Um, find the render property. So normally if you just omit the render property, it'll just render the data index as a string just as it comes in. But we can modify how it's displayed using the render property. And that's a function pass a function with the value that would have got rendered normally. So metadata and the, the record, the full record that gets um, that gets that, that is represented for the whole row. So in this case we're we're not going to get to this today actually so we probably just delete this and we'll talk about it next week so in fact we're just going to take this all out because we just want the full name to display and nothing else and the next column we want to display is the, the subject column so we're going to do the same here set the data index um, to subject header false and flex one means that we want this column to just fill the available with we don't want it to be a fixed width, we just want it to grow as far as it can. And finally, we want to show the date um, on the far column. So we're going to use a special type of column, which is called the date column. And that means that we can pass it this special format property, which will automatically take the date object and 
or use a string to format it into a more readable format. So we chosen this one, which gives it um, the date, the month, and the year. And we want it to we use a line to send it to the end. So we're going to write a line it, give it a width of 100. We've set header false. So we don't actually need this um, header property in. If you did have header uh, true or a default to true, so we just admitted this, and then this header property would be the string that appeared at the top. But we were going to admit that. And we've set the data index to date, because that's the date we want to pull in. So we're going to save that. And now we can bring into our main class and pull in this grid and hopefully see it on screen. So we go to here. So at the moment, we've got an empty, an empty viewport, which we've seen here. Hopefully, it's still working. Yep. So now we're going to, we're going to um, require in our messages grid. So that tells the framework that we, when this main view is loaded, we want to load all these extra ones, including the mess messages grid. And we're just going to set up the items array. We're going to set an object. We're going to use the X type that we set up, which was messages dash message grid. Um, and we're going to give this uh, we're going to give this viewport a layout so that it knows how to render the sub items it's got. So it's, we're going to use the border layout just for future. We're going to use it in the future. So we say type border. And then to make that work, we need to give the tell the the grid what region to put it in. So we want to put it in the center region. And that's the region that just expands out to fill the screen. So we've got the columns in the messages grid, but we don't have a data source yet. So we want to use the data source that we've defined in the model, in the view model. So we want this store here to be bound to that grid. So what we'll do is we'll use the bind property, which tells the framework to, to bind all these properties into the view model. And we'll just say store. And we use this curly bracket syntax. And we use the messages name, which is the same name as this. And that will tell us, take the store property, bind it to that, um, to that view model property. And if anything changes in the view model, that uh, binding will change as well. So all being well, we should see, in fact, from our previous load, we should see the messages .json loading because the view model is being loaded as part of the main application, uh, the main view, and that store is getting created. So that's getting loaded correctly. So that's good. So now if we refresh, we should see a grid appear, and we should see that it's got the full names, we've got the subjects, and we've got the dates formatted nicely. That's all it takes to get. Um, a grid of data on the screen, which is um, you know it's really easy. So the next um, thing we want to do is well, for, first of all, in our in our sample we have the unread messages showing as bold. So let's put that in quickly. <coughs> me. So we need to do some CSS for that. So we're going back to the grid, and we want to tell. Um, the framework to for each grid rule give a CSS class based on its state, and we can use that hook to give it some styling. So we're going to use the view config um, property. So within a grid, you have the grid itself, and within that there's a view, which is a it's called a, it's a table view in this case, and that's how it renders out the um, each rule. And so to give uh, pass in config to that uh, table view, we use the view config uh, property. So to do that, we um, so to to give each row a special CSS class, we can override the get row class function. That's in a function, and it gives us one parameter, which is the record itself, and we can use that to decide what CSS class to put on. Um, so in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to, because we're going to add some more classes in the future, we're going to create a CS a class array. And if the message record as a property unread is true, then we push the the, um, the class unread on there, and then we return that um, class array, join it with a space, so any other 
classes we add in the future will just get appended in a big string with spaces in between and they'll get applied. So now if we go back and refresh our page, we won't see any ch style changes, but now if we do a find in here or dot unread, now we can see two different rows um, showing us unread. Um, and they all have unread, um, they have the unread flag set to true. So now we can create a CSS file to give that uh, style class some, some actual styling. So to do that, we just create a file alongside the grid, call it message grid.scss, and then that will be picked up by the framework to um, uh, and be compiled uh, just as we go so that we can change the styling. So we're going to add a quick CSS style called dot .unread, and we're going to target the grid style inner, which is a sub um, element, and we're going to give it font weight bold. So if we save that, hopefully it will rebuild, and we will get a new CSS style come through. Let me just check it's picked it up. Accenture commands having a bit of a, a bit of a pause. Let's try and refresh it again. Not quite. No, it's not quite, it's not uh, picking up our CSS. Um, let's just check I've not made a typo. Right, let's, let's come back to that because it's not um, so important. So uh, we've got the, the structure in there and we'll not waste time um, trying to, to figure that out. So we've got the message um, the message grid there. So now we want to be able to um, click through from one of those rows and view the details on it like we, like we do here. So we need to um, first of all we need to create a, a view that will show the message itself. So we're going to do that by creating a new file. So we'll create one called a folder called reader and we'll call um, this uh, message reader .js. And we will create a basic class. I'm just going to paste this in because I'm aware of time now. So we've got a message uh, reader class and we're extending the uh, x.panel. And we've got an alias there, reader dash message reader. And we've got a CSS class that we've defined and a basic template which just lays out the details of the message. So we've got subject, full name, the email it's sent from, the date, and the message here. And then the data property, we just give it a default value of an uh, empty object just so it has something to hook onto. And we'll also add some styling. Um, so we'll create a message uh, reader.scss class alongside there. And I'll just paste in the styling that I've set up here. Basically just laying things out, giving some bold and changing some font sizes, so nothing, nothing spectacular. So now that's ready, we need to um, be able to uh, show that um, show that message reader when we've clicked on our on our message in the grid. So to do that, we have to create a wrapper around um, message grid. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a wrapper uh, component which will have a card layout. And the card layout basically says you can have as many items in it as you want, but only one is displayed at the same time. So it's kind of like a wizard. So in our case, we want the message grid to show um, in the first instance. And if you click on a, a message, we want to trigger the um, card layer to switch to the reader um, component, which will then show, and it will show the message that we've clicked on. So to do that, we we want to uh, create a new component as a 
as a, as a single item of the main um, the main viewport. So I'm just going to paste in some um, some things. So this is just going to be a basic panel. We want it to be region centre because this is replacing the message grid. So we're going to take that out, and we've got a layout of card, and we've put a reference there, which we can use to get hold of a reference of this component in the future should we need it. Um, and then we create an items array within that car, uh, panel, and we make the message grid um, with a single item there. So that should nothing should change in our application here. Apart from it should actually load something. We've got there. Oh, there we go. So nothing's changed there, which is good. But now we want to add the message reader as the second item. So we do that by um, just exactly the same. We'd set the X type message reader and we want to bind the data property that we set to an empty object in the first place to this property called selected message, but we've not introduced that yet, so we'll come back to that. And we just need to require in the reader um, components so we always have it available uh, when we when we load. So this selected message is a, going to be a property in our view model. So let's jump to our view model and create it. So we've got data, we're going to say selected message, and we're going to set it to null. So that'll start off with, with no message has been selected. Um, but the, the message reader will bind the data property of it um, to the selected message, and that means that that message will message model. That'll be an instance of mess of the mess mod the message model, and it means that that model instance will be used to populate the template that we defined. So how are we going to get that selected message uh, populated when we click on a row of the grid? So we're going to um, use the item click event of the um, of the grid. So we're going to um, paste in a listener's definition. We're going to say item click, so that's the event name, and this is the function that we're going to bind to it. And this function name will relate to a function in the main controller. So this is going to be common because in the modern application, we're going to have a list of messages, so we're going to be able to handle this in the same way. So we're going to put this in the base, main controller base. So we're going to create a function um, called uh, message on message click. And let me just grab the code for that. So the parameters that that uh, function, that event, gives us is the grid itself, a record for the row that we've clicked on, the element that the record, uh, is, you know, the record has been rendered into, the index of the element of uh, the row. And then E is the event object. So all we're going to do here is we're going to take that message record and we're going to use it to populate the selected message uh, property. So we use the get view model uh, function, which gives us a reference to the main model um, instance, and we use the set message to say give the selected message data property the message record as its value. And because we've used the bind. Um, the bind function in the uh, sorry the bind config in the main view here that will be then passed through. So the last thing we need to do is we need to tell the this card uh, layout to change because obviously if we've clicked on a message we've selected the message and the reader has now displaying that message but it's displaying it behind the scenes because the card layout hasn't changed. So what we can do is the card layout has an active item. Uh, property config and that uh, accepts a, a index to tell you which item should be selected or a, a, an ID or an item ID relating to the active item so we can use that to trigger the change automatically so what we'll use is the bind config again and we'll, we'll specify the active item and we'll pass in another property that we're going to set in the view model called message card index so we need to go back to the main model and define that. So it's not going to be a um, a data property. It's going to be a formula because we don't um, we want it to change as the selected message has changed. So we define the property name there. 
we create a function so the the value that message card in its holes will be the result of this function and it takes one parameter which is get which we can use um, to get uh, the values from other data properties or other formulas so in this case we want to see we want the index to to re re uh, reflect which card we want to show so when selected message is null we want to show the list of messages so we want the index to be zero because we want that first card to be shown but if the selected message has a, a model instance in it it's truthy we want to uh, show index number one which is the reader so all we do is uh, say return get selected message and if selected message is truthy then we return one which will say the reader card if not then return zero and that this formula will get reevaluated every time this property is updated so by using this get method it, it creates a binding between the two so now if we switch back to our um, app so we've got the thing and if we click the uh, formula gets refreshed and we switch to the card and that's how easy it is to get that binding set up because we've not actually written any code to tell the card to swap and all through the sort of explicit bindings so now we've um we, we can view the messages but now we, we we can't go back without refreshing so we'll need to set up a toolbar like we've got up here with a back button so that we can uh, return back to our list so to do that quickly all we're going to do is create a toolbar uh, component we'll call it message uh, messages toolbar uh, and i'll just i'll just paste in the definition for now because we're running a little bit short in time so i'll just explain through so we've got our class name here, which uses the folder structure view messages messages toolbar. We extend the x.toolbar.toolbar .toolbar class, so that gives us all the toolbar functionality. And we've got our alias, which is messages um, dash messages toolbar. So we'll use that when we create it. And I'll come back to this one once we come down. So we've got an items array, and we've got two buttons. We've got a refresh, which we've set a tooltip, the icon. And we've got a back which has an icon and um, a handler too. So in the here, we've got the handler set up as being a string of on refresh click. And by setting this default listener scope to true, it will look within the component class itself for the a method that has that name. So down here we have on refresh click and on back click. So if we if we remove this um, property, it would um, look and look into the view controller for our method that has that name rather than in the component itself. So we don't want to go out to the, to the view controller to, to handle this, we want to keep it internal. So we've got an, uh, a handler called on refresh click and all that does is re, uh, fire an event called refresh. And similarly the back um, button fires an event called back and we're going to handle them um, further up the, tra the chain. And obviously in our example, um, here we show the refresh button on the list but not the back button and the back button on the, the reader and not the refresh button so we need to tell framework, uh, tell our component to hide and show the right button so we use the uh, bind config again and we find the hidden um, property which will hide the button and we bind it to the selected message um, property and because it will evaluate as truthy or falsy we can make use of that and so if the selected message is truthy then hidden will be set to true and the refresh button will be hidden so that means that if selected message is, is, is set as true then the refresh button will hide and we just do the opposite down here with the back button we do it we can use the not um, operator to say if the selected message is, is truthy then we want to we flip it to falsy and that will show the back button and to avoid a wee flicker when we first load the app we set the hidden to true for the back button because we wanted to default as, as hidden so with that in place we can then add it to our um to our main uh, main view 
So we'll just add it as it requires. And we'll add it as a docked item to this main um, card panel. And that's because we want it to show um, all the time, regardless of what card is shown. So we set it up as a um, as a docked item. We dock it to the top. So I'll just pop that code in here. So docked items <coughs> can have an array of items that we will be sort of outside the main layout, but stuck to the top, bottom, or left, or right. So we use the X type as normal messages toolbar. We tell it to dock to the top. And here's where we listen for those two events that we raise within the um, the component. So they're refreshing back, and now we see we've got strings with method names, and we don't have that default listener scope set. So this will look for these messages in the, um, the, the view controller. So we will then have to go to the view controller and add them in so that they work. So if we just jump through there, and we'll just paste these two in. So we've got on back to messages grid. And on refresh, I'll explain these two. Comment. So on refresh messages, we just want to dip into the view controller. We want to grab the store, the messages store, and we want to just call reload. That'll hit the server again, pull down the data, and swap it for um, the new data that comes down. Obviously, in our case, it's, it's not changed, so it's just going to be the same data. But later on, when we start editing things and changing the labels and that sort of thing, then that will actually reset everything. And to go back to the messages grid, all we need to do is get the view model and set the selected messages back to null. That will then trigger the formula to reevaluate, which says selected message is, is falsy. So we, we pick zero as the index, and that filters to the card layout and flips the, the view back. So if we go back to our uh, oh, one, we're back to here. So now we can see the refresh button is showing the um, back button isn't, which is good. And if we clear out our network tab, if we click it, we should see that the new data come through. So that'll happen every time. And then if we click, then we um, see the viewer, the reader with the message, and we see the refresh button's gone and the back button's here. Um, instead and clicking that will uh, reset the selected message back to null and flip us back to this uh, grid view. Um, so that's us got almost to where we were we were aiming for. So we've got five minutes left. I would hope uh, maybe we'll pause on pause there and uh, open up to any questions that might come up um, just so we have a bit of time. I'm happy to stay longer if people want to um, if there's questions to be answered. So if you want to if you've got a question, maybe shout, shout it into the questions tab on the, um, the webinar software. And happy to get to them, or if you want to open up mics, we can do that too. I hope it's not been too uh, whirlwind, and um, apologies for my uh, um, bit of a cold I've got just now. Um, but hopefully it's been uh, understandable. No, it's been absolutely brilliant, Stuart. Um... There's a couple of questions um, uh, very quickly. Um, obviously, you, you kind of set up the icon there for the refresh and the, the back button uh, very quickly. Um, is there somewhere that you can find uh, kind of a list of the different icons that you can use? Or um... oh, yeah. yeah, so the, um, sorry, I was going to just gloss over that. So um, X has this font awesome built in straight out of the box. So we don't need to do it to set up that. But all you need to do is add this X dash FA. Uh, class and that gives us that's like the equivalent if you've used font awesome before you can add just the fa class and then you add the specific icon class so if you go to font awesome, uh, dot com, i think um and you can uh, browse all the icons there um and search for them here so you'll see there's our refresh icon the the alternative is to if you inspect the yeah, element, you can you can sort of swap it. Um, so by just doing FA dash, and you can browse through all the different ones in the developer tools. So you can change it to an address card if you want, and just go through and see what one looks good in your in your specific situation. Okay, yeah, brilliant. So if you select it on the website, you can then see the the class ID for it, and you just need to put that in there. So. 
Yeah, that, that's it. So it says FA refresh. We've used, I've used redo for some reason. Okay, cool. No, that's brilliant. Um, I say for, for those of you watching this live, then um, as you exit out, there's going to be a quick um, survey just to um, get your feedback in terms of um, the sessions that we're doing, um, other ideas for uh, things you'd like to see covered uh, in the future. Um, there's another question here from Andreas. Um, he was asking specifically around um, the architect edition. Um, and would you be able to use the architect edition um, of Cinches to be able to kind of kickstart and get going? Um, with this type of project? Um, yeah, so the architect, you can, um, you would be able to do all this um, in architect because we're not doing a lot of um, heavy lifting ourselves, really. Um, you know, I think we've only written about a dozen lines of actual code. Um, so, yeah, absolutely, the architect could be used to build this. I, I've not used architect very much. Um, but this sort of thing is is perfect for using architect for to get views, you know, quickly configured and um, and uh, linked together like this. But it's a good idea for a future webinar if you want to maybe we could redo this whole thing in, in architect. That would be quite a good idea. Okay, great. Um, another question here from Daniel. Um, is it possible, are you going to put um, the sample up onto a repo that um, the others could download? Um, yeah, we'll figure out some way to get the get the code um, out so you can have a browse and play around yourself. Um, leave it with us and hopefully Stephen can um, get that out to everyone who's here. Um, yeah, we'll... So we'll have a look. Yeah, we're we're in the middle of um, just setting up a, a blog post um, around the the Century Cafe anyway, um, uh, and the aim will be to put a link to the replays for each session uh, on there, uh, and we'll publish on there the kind of specific topic elements as they're coming through. So um, uh, keep an eye out for that, and certainly uh, we hopefully have a link for that next week. Um, uh, but otherwise, um, yeah, just keep an eye out on the the, the kind of Century Twitter account, and we'll make sure that the uh, the post is shared and put onto there. Um, Daniel's suggesting whether I've got the CSS file properly included and I've just copied and pasted what I have in my sample um, more, more um, directly and it's still not showing up so I must have typoed something along the way. Um, okay. Well, we are live. Sure so. <laughs> yes, I know. If that, that was the worst thing that went uh, wrong. We're doing all right. Um, so I guess uh, tune in next week um, to find out the well, answer. There we are, in fact. Oh, uh, yeah. It's all coming up now. The answer is it's off the, it's off the page. So the, none of these top ones were unread, but the bottom ones were. Oh, awesome. So there they are. A uh, few comments about, you know, great presentation, really useful. Yeah, I think um, it's quite interesting. We've actually been having a, a chat internally. Um, and uh, uh, one of the, the things around Censure specifically is the way that it handles data and manages the whole kind of data model side of things. Um, and it's it's a real kind of secret weapon in the toolbox, um, you know, to try and do the amount of stuff we're doing here. You can see the, you know, the, the amount of bindings and bits that Stuart's had to do to kind of get this working. It's pretty lightweight, um, and when you consider the whole data model is able to help you deal with huge quantities of data very, very quickly uh, and in a very scalable way, um, it it really is uh, it's a very, very powerful feature to see. So I'm, I'm really glad you guys are enjoying uh, watching that go through uh, and getting this going. Okay, um, we see we're at the top of the hour, um, so it's time for us to, to draw to the end today. Um, thanks ever so much, everybody, for the questions and, and for joining in today. Um, I say, if you are watching this on demand, then feel free just to, to drop us a message over. Um, uh, you, know, you can contact um, either of us through, and uh, we'll have to take your, your questions and comments. Um, but otherwise, we'll see you through next time. And uh, happy coding, everyone. Great. Thanks a lot, Stephen. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Bye-bye.